Hello everyone and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video and we have a seemingly normal looking New Glenn but this be not a normal New Glenn. This be one that has a reusable second stage. Yes, that is basically what we're going to be doing today's video. We're going to be testing out the possibility of how Blue Origin might do a reusable second stage which would make New Glenn a fully reusable rocket which would be pretty cool if they could do that. Spoiler alert, they'll probably fail. Um, but yeah, it's been um, revealed, or heavily revealed would be more accurate term um that uh, that jeff is going to be looking into doing some reusable second stages right it's called project jarvis is their code name because apparently spacex was doing it and now they want to do it because they want to be cool right um there's also a rumor that they're changing new glenn to be stainless steel which is like come on bro that's like literally starship but whatever whatever um if that gets we get more information on that i'll just really want to <laughs> look into that a little more but basically what we're doing today is we're gonna be having a look at a reusable second stage for new glenn and i'm gonna be testing it in ksp to see how they might go about doing it so let's get into the launch all right, so now we can switch to post commentary, me talking, very epic. So yeah, we can get ready to launch the new Glenn, and then in just a few seconds, I will uh, be getting ready to talk about some of the, the rationale behind my design. I mean, really, it is really the only practical design that I think I came up with. Um, there aren't very many options when you're talking about at least a second stage the size of new Glenn's, because uh, new Glenn's upper stage is not very big. You'll see when we, we separate the stages here in a little bit. Um, so your options are kind of limited. You can't really do a Starship-esque like flaps and flips and stuff, especially since they have only vacuum engines on the new Glenn. And vacuum engines do not work very well at sea level, right? So uh, that'd be a terrible idea. If that's what Jeff wants to do, bleh, don't do that, Jeff. Um, yeah, like I said, I'll talk about it a little bit later into the flight. Right now, I kind of want to talk about our launch New Glenn for all of its delayed issues. Delays, delays. OMG, why is it taking them so long to build this rocket? Um, I think, actually, it has the best reuse ability of any bottom stage. Um, I know this is supposed to be about the second stage reusability, but I, want, I do want to quickly t touch upon here when we separate the uh, stages here in just a moment. And where's Miko? Miko, there's Miko. All right, so we'll go ahead and separate the upper stage, and then we'll switch. You can see how small it is, right? You can switch it to the bottom stage, and actually, basically, the way you fly this thing, you do. We're gonna do a quick boost back burn. The way this thing flies is you basically have to like fly it like a plane, almost. Super cool, um, if I do say so myself. I guess I do, right? So you'll see when you get a little bit lower. But uh, would like to really say, if you're enjoying the video, uh, if you like the channel, you could subscribe. You could become a member. You could uh, become Patreon. You could buy the merch. You could join the Discord. Um, I think that's it. All right, cool. Let's continue in the video. And no one likes the plugs. I don't like them. You don't like them. Point is, I have to do them, right? Because, I don't know, people say they work, right? So uh, anyway, we're going to start our descent. You can see we have those little um, control surfaces moving at the top. Those bottom ones are completely static, those of you who do not know. Um, yeah, I don't know. There hasn't been much news about New Glenn. Actually, this is a, this is the most interesting thing that's happened um, happened for New Glenn since uh, they announced it was going to be delayed until like 2022 or something. So if they even get there, but they're switching the material to stainless steel, which I think would be very dumb because they've already been developing this for so long and it would just delay it so long, so much longer. But yeah, and also if they're going to try and reuse the second stage, that's also going to add loads of time to their. I think they should just worry about trying to get to orbit and then try and worry about trying to be better than or even equal to space they should probably worry about that later but here you can see what i mean by this thing is crazy controllable i think this is the most effective way i think this is better than grid fins because uh, you could really scrub off a lot of velocity doing this but uh yeah we're gonna go ahead and light up uh, just three of these seven engines for our landing burn because um, that's a pretty good uh, amount of thrust uh yeah so hopefully new glenn will work i mean it is a really cool rocket i would like to see it fly but i don't know I don't know, it has, it has Jeff at the helm, so, you know, we'll see what happens. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and drop the landing legs, and then um, once the landing legs are down, we have touched the booster down, and um, then we'll be able to talk a little bit more about the heat shield situation and the recovery of the second stage, right? So, touchdown! Right, cool, we can uh, crossfade now back to uh, us getting into orbit with our upper stage. So, SpaceX, um, what Elon Musk specifically talked about, um upper stage reuse on Falcon, and he was like, they're going to land it at a bouncy castle or whatever. I don't know what he was really talking about. Um, but that's, there. that was, he was, he said that they wanted to do it. Obviously that didn't pan out and they started, you know, putting their effort into Starship. So this is probably quite a similar situation uh, in terms of how you want to recover the second stage. So basically the only way you could really do it. So there's, there's basically, there's basically two ways, right? Um, so option one is you could actually send up a secondary launch, which has a payload on it. Like, uh, you could have like a little 
you could attach like some heat shields and some parachutes and stuff like that if you don't want to carry the weight into orbit with you, um, which is possibility number one, right? But that requires an entire launch. Um, and that's a super expensive. And that probably doesn't help with the, you know, it doesn't because the point is to save money and make the turnaround times faster and stuff, right? So, but option two is what we're gonna be doing here. So option two is to just launch with all that stuff on board, which eats into your payload capacity quite considerably. Uh, right, so you know, because on upper stage, basically every single kilogram or any, every single gram, a milligram, every single piece of weight, right, you put on um, as basically recovery hardware is, you know, a little bit of weight that you can't use. Like if you put on like, I don't know, like five tons of parachutes and heat shields, then you have five tons less of payload capacity, right? So, you know, it's a balancing act, um, especially with New Glenn's upper stage, because it's quite small. It's not a very large percentage of the rocket. I'm really questioning like even falcons falcons upper stage is around 30 percent of the rocket new glens is probably only closer to 20 percent right so I, it's very questionable and maybe they want the engines back or something where are my engines jeff right you know that's the meme um so yeah so now yes yeah, this is just a weird idea jeff you know it's a weird one uh i yeah i don't know about this one but yeah okay so on to how this works, right? So the way this works is I put a heat shield in the front. You basically mount the payload on top of the heat shield, and then you can just attach the payload to attach it, which is a docking port. So you actually have to expend a little bit here. Um, but the heat shield, right? So this is where you get to test the, so yeah. So the, the reason it can get tricky is because the, uh, the the center mass is quite far back. It's because, you know, the engines are super heavy and you have a little of uh, residual fuel, right? So what can happen is that things are gonna wanna kind of, it's good, it's more stable entering back first, but that's why we have the big heat shield is a bunch of surface surface area, right? So it's kind of basically trying to make like a capsule-esque type look to this thing. Um, you can inflate the heat shield, um, which is the inflatable one's really the only option because you need a lot of surface area. The second stage is quite big and you really need to stop it from, because if you had a smaller heat shield, it would just flip backwards, right? So, although, yeah, so that's basically our entry is gonna work. Uh, there is something really cool here actually. Um, because of the way uh, aerodynamics work, right? So what's gonna happen when you get to the thicker parts of the atmosphere is we're actually gonna be able to use roll to kind of control the orientation of our, our, our second stage, right? So I'm trying to aim for as close as possible to KSC. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna roll at 180 degrees, which is gonna force our nose down, which is gonna increase our entry angle and also can turn it to the left a little bit. This is actually kind of cool. Um, Cause yeah, you can actually kind of fly this thing Sort of, right? You don't get that much control, but you get enough control that, like, I don't know, you could turn it, you can you can control your trajectory a little bit. Real capsules do this, right? They have a little bit of offset center mass and you can roll them to change the pitch and roll and yaw and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's entry taken care of. And this heat shield actually serves a double purpose. The second purpose we'll get onto in a minute or two once we get closer to the surface of the water. But now, uh, as you can probably see towards the top of the stage, or I guess it's the bottom of the stage, you know, the, the, the engine side of the stage, right? We have some some parachutes. So we have two drogues and two mains, um, and we'll sequence them out and uh, deploy them when we get a little bit lower towards the ground landing. Very epic sunset, although the sun's kind of totally set now, so it's nighttime. Um, so yeah, gonna be popping the the, uh, the first round of shoots out here, uh, just under three and a half kilometers, and then the mains will come out at uh, just under one kilometer. So there go the. Secondary, uh, or the drogues, they're gonna fully deploy, gonna slow us down a little bit. And I made the mistake of turning SAS off here because, oh my, it starts to flop around like crazy here in just a second. There go the mains and, oh my, yeah, SAS back on. Oh my, because it's kind of important that we land on the heat shield um, for reasons I will discuss in just a moment. So here it comes, here it comes. Around 17 meters a second, quite fast, but touchdown or splashdown, yeah. So basically, the the point of the heat shield is also to kind of serve as like an impact damp, right? It's gonna hit on the heat shield, and therefore it's not gonna like touch down on the engines or the fuel tank. So it, it's less of a chance of damaging any hardware. So it's like either they're not the engines aren't what's actually smashing into the ground. It's the heat shield. So hopefully it can take a lot of the force, and it actually also helps provide a little bit of buoyancy um, to help the thing. So heat shield's really good. And then I assume they just bring a ship and like scoop it out of the water or anything, something like that. And then they can restack it and refly it. It'd be epic, right? Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's what I got for my video today. I'd like to thank all the members for being members. You guys are super cool. If you want to become a member, hit the join button below. Unless you're on mobile. I don't know why it doesn't exist there, but that's that. Anyway. Um, if you want to be, uh, do a Patreon, you can uh, join the link in this, hit the link in the description. There's all the Patreons. Thank you everyone for watching. I'd like to thank, uh, yeah, yeah, thanks everyone.
Wow, I'm, my, my outro is completely messed up. But anyway, thank you all for watching. See you next time. Be sure to come to the video. And again, thank you for watching. See you next time. And bye.